Hi, so in this video, I want to show you some examples of authentic materials. So authentic materials are materials that we use in our everyday life, okay? Things that we use when we're traveling, things that we read, and so on, okay? Things we use at work. So authentic materials are different from classroom materials. Classroom materials are designed purely for education, purely for teaching and learning, okay? So authentic materials are just just things that we use in our everyday life. Now, authentic materials are really good for higher level and older students who need kind of real world examples. You know, they're, they're uh, learning English, maybe for travel, maybe for business, maybe for studying. So authentic materials are gonna be very suitable for those, okay? You do have to keep a few things in mind. Authentic materials are not graded in terms of language, so you know, you've got to be careful that the language is not too, too difficult. Um, yeah, so keep that in mind and, and have a check. Now, in this video, I'm not going to cover all authentic materials. Specifically in this video, I'm going to cover authentic materials that you can easily find and print from the internet, okay? So, you know, in a setting like Korea, it's not always easy to find authentic English language materials like newspapers and magazines or brochures and so on. So I'm focusing on authentic materials we can find on the internet in this video. I'm just going to show you a load of examples just to give you some ideas about the different types of things you can find. Okay, so let's start on the first example. This is a subway map. Okay, so a subway map is a really nice material. A lot of uh, often when people are traveling to a new city, one of the first things they need to do is take the subway, maybe from the airport or maybe to their hotel, right? So a subway map is a really nice material. Uh, you can do things like practicing asking for directions, um, planning, you know, planning a journey from one station to the next. There's lots of different things you can do with subway maps. And of course, you could. Um, you could add extra materials like uh, a guide to tourist destinations and have students planning which tourist destinations they're going to go to. Okay, or you could add something like a timetable and have students checking what time the trains are. Okay, so yeah, that's the first one, subway map. Very authentic and, you know, all of us, when we travel to other countries, we take public transport. Okay, so that's a good one. Now you're going to notice a lot of these are kind of related to travel. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Okay, so let's have a look at the next one. This is a menu. Okay, so a menu is really, again, very common, really authentic experience. A lot of us, you know, even if we go to another country and we don't speak much of the language and we only stay for a few days, we're probably going to at some point read a menu. So you can easily find real authentic menus and materials like this online just search for you know restaurant menu pdf you can even choose a city right so if you have an interest in a specific thing you could say like melbourne restaurant menu pdf or you could say london cafe menu pdf to find examples so the menus, you know, they're really good. They have lots of authentic words. You can practice ordering food. You can find out what these uh, different salads and different, you know, dishes are. You can Google image search them and show the pictures of the food. I've done this with students before. And it's really good because, you know, they're getting like real cultural information about places that they might visit. For example, on here, I can see paninis and wrap. Okay, now um, a lot of Korean people don't know about wraps and paninis, so it's a good idea to teach these kind of main concepts of food that they're going to come across in other countries. Yeah, so definitely check out menus, nice authentic material, good for vocabulary, good for role play, um, and also very cultural as well. Um, but do just check that the language isn't too difficult, because some menus have like, like, for example, a lot of French or Italian words, and that could be a little bit difficult. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, now here you have like a, just a general kind of town tourist guide. Now these kind of brochures are really nice for teaching because you've got different sections on the brochure. You have usually have things like a little map. Uh, you might have like information like the address and the phone number of the tourist information office. You might have like timetables or restaurant guide or, um, you know, various kind of 
uh, sites that you can go to or like tourist buses and things like that. So just one material like this would have lots of different sections that you can use in your teaching. You can do things like jigsaw reading, you can give different tasks like planning a day out or or uh, you know choosing places to visit and things like that. So yeah, yeah, really good. The, these kind of materials I really, really like. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, again, this is kind of a kind of a tourist information sheet that you can easily print. This one's nice because it has the little map with the numbers and then um, the the numbers have like a paragraph each that tells you a little bit about these kind of main sites to visit in California. Okay, so yeah, again, like I said, you know, if, if you can just choose a place like California or New York or Washington DC, you can search for that place plus tourist brochure or menu, etc. Okay, and again, yeah, jigsaw reading, something like this, perfect for jigsaw reading. So, you know, the first pair you have to read number one, the second pair you have to read number two, next pair you have to read number three, and then you kind of join together and share what you learned and compare the different places. You can give tasks like, you know, you can only visit three places. So which three places are you going to visit, okay? Yeah, lots, so much authentic kind of uh, classroom tasks you can do with this that kind of mimic real life. And that's kind of the benefit of authentic materials. Okay, right, again, a brochure, but this time it's a zoo. So uh, you can choose a brochure like a general kind of area or city guide. But for this one, I've chosen a specific place that you can visit. So this is a zoo brochure. And again, you've got lots of different sections. You've got the price for the tickets. You've got the little map. You've got the list of animals. You'd have different paragraphs on the other side explaining different things about the park. And yeah, there's loads of things you can do with this. You can have them, you know, pretending to be parents or pretending to be children or doing a role play where they have to call the zoo. Or they could, um, you know, plan a route uh, walking around the zoo to, to see their favorite animals, right? So many nice things you can do with this authentic material. Okay, what's next? Okay, so again, this is kind of a place that you can visit in a town. This one is a museum. So this is Broom Historical Museum. I've got no idea where this is. Um, but yeah, again, lots of nice content and very authentic. And there's lots of things you can do here. Look, you've even got like the history here. So you've got different sections related to various things, visiting with kids, running out of time, family history. So you could um, you could give different groups different tasks, right? So this group has to explain about the history and this group has to give like the tourist information, you know. Yeah, so that one's about museum. Okay, right, so now let's change to something a little bit different now. So, so far we've kind of looked at travel uh, content travel materials this is completely different now this is a this is a resume or a cv okay now what can you do with a resume there's so many things you can do with this so a resume as you know is is um kind of a guide about somebody's education and experience and qualifications um this would probably be more uh this could be like a business teaching concept context where you're teaching uh, uh business workers um, or it could be students who are preparing to go into work um, or, you know, looking for work and practicing job interviews and things like that. So there's various things you can do with this depending on what kind of students you have. Um, for, for younger people who are preparing to go into work, you might use this as a model for looking at how resumes are written. And resumes are written differently in English and in different countries. So, yeah, you can use these examples and have students then develop their own resumes. And then those can be used later on for kind of uh, interview role plays and things. For business students, you, this might be different, right? If you're teaching people who hire people, you could give them several resumes and have them, um, have them um, comparing different resumes and, and choosing which people have the best skills and kind of negotiating about, um, you know, which employers do you think are going to be the better, better workers for their business. So, yeah, um, and lots of good language in here as well in these resumes. It's got very kind of, you know, formal business English, good um, kind of, uh, you know, high level English. 
So yeah, resumes, really good. Okay, um, yeah, this is like a business plan. So this is kind of a uh, quite a simple version here, but this is like a suggestion of a business plan. So yeah, some kind of business plan might be good for business students. You know, you might have students that are looking to open a business or open a cafe, and you could read about that in English. Okay, what's next? Okay, this is a recipe. Recipes are great authentic materials. Um, some students really love this kind of thing. And again, you can learn good vocabulary with this. Um, you can learn about food vocabulary and verbs, cooking language and things. Often these things have um, kind of uh, sequential words like first, second, third as well. So yeah, you could read the recipe. You can do things like um, planning a shopping trip, making a shopping list, um, um, have them drawing pictures of what should be done at different parts of the um, the recipe. So almost like making like a, a webtoon out of the recipe, like a visual guide to cooking. Um, and then if possible, you know, if you have the um, the facilities, you could actually cook it properly at the end. Okay, that's, you know, quite a common thing to do in academies where you have like young learners in a kind of cooking class. Okay, we've just got a few more now. Uh, this one is again about food. But this one is a kind of brochure about a restaurant. Okay, so again, you've got these different sections. Um, and good for reading comprehension and jigsaw reading and things like that and next one here ah yeah okay so this is a, a student guide for a university okay so this would be great for young learners uh, not young learners i mean you know younger learners like uh, kind of high school and college and university age you could take sections from a university guide and read about universities in english learn about the facilities how to apply um yeah you know lots of good content in these kind of things okay so yeah i hope that's given you some good ideas you know that this isn't an exhaustive guide of everything of all authentic materials i just wanted to show you kind of a mix of different things you can find uh, for travel english for hobbies for business kind of english for students yeah have a look online you know just just choose a city and and choose some keywords um search for pdf you might be able to download the whole pdf and you've got yourself there lots of authentic materials for authentic tasks okay i hope that was useful and interesting thank you very much